Our next speaker, he has the best name on the panel, Ricky Ray Butler. He's an American entrepreneur who founded Plaid Social Labs, a social media company that develops and executes brand integration and customer content strategies on YouTube and other platforms, including mobile, with video. Ricky graduated from BYU in 2008, and he is currently the Senior Vice President of Corbis, which acquired his company in 2015. Ricky Ray is known for his strong connections amongst YouTubers, and some of you are familiar with them. And he has instrumental in pulling together Peter Hollins, David Archuleta, the Piano Guys, and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir to create the world's largest live nativity scene. Please welcome Ricky Ray. Hey everyone, um, super thrilled to be here. I came here two years ago and um, there's definitely a special spirit. And, and um, um, when, I, when I was told that there was another opportunity for, for me to come back and to be able to spend time with all of you, um, I, was, I was very excited and I jumped to the opportunity. And, and I'm, I'm just very happy to be here, very happy um, to see all the talent out there. Um, a lot of you are very creative. Um, a lot of you have put a lot of great effort um, into these presentations. And I mean, every should, everyone should be proud to be here. As the other Ricky mentioned, um, I, I started a company called Plaid Social Labs. Uh, we were the first company um, to really help c big companies um, to work with online influencers like YouTube celebrities, Instagram celebrities, Snapchat influencers, and um, you know what, what we now call you know online content creators. Last oh two years ago, I, my company was acquired um, by a company called Branded Entertainment Network, um, which was formerly called Corbis, where I currently um, am in a position of um, global um, CCO, and and this company is 100% owned by Bill Gates. And I've been able to meet him a couple of times. It's been, it's been an awesome experience. And I, instead of starting a new business immediately after I sold my company, I was actually really excited to go into a larger organization and learn how to navigate it, as well as taking a, a larger company and, and, and taking them to the next level. And, and so this company now, we still work with these online creators, these um, YouTube celebrities and influencers. Um, but we also are the biggest company in the world that um, does product placement in Hollywood films, um, in film and TV shows, as well as you know, programs that you'd watch on Netflix, as well as, as Amazon Prime. And it's, it's been an awesome experience. It's been awesome not to have to worry about payroll or um, be much more involved in the accounting process. I've been able to focus on the areas that I have more strength and been able to focus on you know, growing um, our revenue as well as um, overseeing a, a much larger team. I just want to let you know that I'm a very simple person. I'm from a very simple family, from a very simple area. I was a freaking redneck up in the mountains of Spanish Fork, Utah. And now I live in Beverly Hills and am, I guess, a Hollywood kind of guy. And, and um, I think I've been successful is because I really um, didn't really understand entertainment and didn't really care about all the superficial stuff that happened. And um, you know, I just started looking at it like numbers and thought there was a lot of good money to be made and we ended up disrupting a lot of things in Hollywood and um, building a business out of Utah, and which you know, r rose a lot of eyebrows. I worked extremely hard. There are times where I, where I cried, where you know, I, you know, I felt pain. There's a lot of blood and sweat and tears um, that went into this process. Probably six different times while building this business, I almost quit, where I was literally seconds away of doing it, or where I got a nice job offer from a really big company. And 
It, it was interesting. I, I, there was always a little voice inside that just said, no, just, just give it a little more time. And I feel very blessed that I've been able to do that, but I can't take the full credit for it. So I, I want to give just a, a couple of principles of advice um, that have helped me where I've been able to see a difference. And I come here because I really want you all to succeed. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so don't listen to everything I say. But, but um, you know, just remember, this is very sincere for me. So, the first thing that I, I, everyone should want to do is seek guidance. And the first thing I would, I would you know, um, just remember is that God doesn't want to just help us spiritually. Um, it's not just about, you know, having a very, very strong testimony and, and doing everything that you need to be doing. No, you should be doing all that. But uh, God is also here to help us in any area of our life that we're really passionate about and that we're determined to see success in. Now, this is not one of those things where if you pray, you're going to become rich. That's, that's ridiculous. But if you have true motivation and, and a true desire to help you know, grow the kingdom of heaven, um, I really do believe God will find areas where you can help in different ways. So one thing to remember when you seek guidance, God does want to help you hit, you know, um, hit your goals. So if, if you read, and, and, and he's the knowledgeable one to do this. Um, if you read Mosiah 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 9, Believe in God, believe that he is, and that he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man doth not comprehend all things which God ha can comprehend. So I remember when I was uh, you know, about to start Plaid, um, I was in a really good job. And, and it was a company that was really growing fast. And I was like the third employee. And, <laughs> and you know, I, I've seen a lot of you know, growth when I was in this position. And I remember, you know, getting on my knees and asking Holy Father, you know, I have this other opportunity where it's really risky. Um, I feel like I should do this. Um, you know, what are your thoughts? I remember feeling, you know, a strong peace. Now, I don't think you always need to receive a response in order to start a business. But the reason why I share this is because of all the headache that I went through, um, spe specifically that first year, I was living off of, for a couple, you know, for, for a couple of months, $150 every two weeks. Um, that's really rough. That's hard. I mean, I, I definitely moved into my grandma's basement and then later my parents' house. I, was, I became a really big fat pest. Um, and, 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 you know, there were some struggles. Um, so, so after I received that impression that I need to go ahead, I was always wondering, oh, this is just a lesson that this is not for me. You know, it's way too hard. But when I pushed through those trials and those rough situations, you know, quickly, I, you know, I found that, you know, everything ended up starting to work out. And, 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 um, and, you know, it ended up being a very successful business where I got to the point where I was making six figures a year, and I got to the point where I was making seven figures a year, and then I ultimately was able to, to, to sell my business. And, I was, I, and it was interesting, um, you know, I, I had no plan on doing that. It, it just ended up, you know, falling into place, and it felt like it was the right thing to do. And, and so when you're building a business, now I'm going on these little tangents, sorry about that. One thing that is, I would remember, there's a lot of people that say, build a business and figure out when you're gonna sell it. I would actually say, no, build a business, and make sure it grows and make sure it can make money. Selling it, you're, you're gonna just keep a fantasy in the back of your head and, and you know, you gotta have to make sure you do all the work before you get to that point and what you need to do is worry about cash flow and making it grow. All right, so seeking guidance. Another form of guidance that you need to seek is to find where you have weaknesses. We, we all have weaknesses, and to be honest, I'm a very arrogant person, and it's really hard for me to admit the weaknesses that I have. But whenever I do, and I realize that I'm not really talented in certain areas, I end up 
progressing and everyone around me becomes much happier and the business ends up growing much faster. Um, if you read Ether 12, 27, and we've all read this scripture, and if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble, and my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then I will make weak things become strong unto them. I promise you, promise you brothers and sisters, if you apply that scripture, you know, to your lives and to your careers, it will help you accelerate um, um, your career and it will help you see a whole other level of growth. Once I realized where I needed to place to certain people um, in my organization, everything just started humming and it just exploded. And it all started with me realizing that I couldn't do everything myself and that I needed to find other support around me. Now, another thing to remember is when you're starting a business, it's a completely other level of, of dedication. Who here um, thinks that they could you know, start a business and only work on it for about 10 hours a week? OK, you know that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> um, who thinks that you, you could, you know, all you need to do is work full time in order to grow a business? All right, you guys have had some good lectures here. Um, Yes, this is not an eight to five um, job. And, and yes, it, it, there's a good chance it's going to affect the balance of um, uh, you know, your work-life balance. And it, it's, it's about making sure you're on the same page. If you're married, you're on the same page with your spouse and that you're, you, know, you both have reached a consensus that you guys are gonna take this to the extra mile. Um, and and, and just, so just to be clear, you know, when I first started my business, the first several years, I was averaging at least 12 hours a day, but it was more like 20 hours a day. And to be honest, 80% of that work was worthless. It was horrible. But I got to the point to realize where I was not doing a good job, what decisions I was making that were not smart decisions, and I started optimizing um, you know, my, 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 my personal workflow and it, you know, started to get smart in my decision making. After things really started growing, I did the exact same thing. I kept trying to reassess where I need to change, where our organization needs to change, and continue to um, you know, optimize our, 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 our efforts. And, and, and so it really, really comes down to working hard, but it's also learning from your mistakes and then you know, surrounding yourself with those that, um, that can do things better than you can. Okay, um, one more um, point that, that I wanted to go over is, it's not about the idea. So having a good idea is really important. But thinking that you have a great idea to the point where you worship it, and you think this is what's gonna make you millions of dollars, that's very dangerous. Why? Most ideas are fluff. Most ideas don't have a lot of substance. Most ideas are, 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 are great to imagine, but when it comes to execution, they might be hard to execute. And I think the more experience you get in creating ideas, the easier it is for you to figure out if those ideas scale or you know, if those ideas are, you know, um, are possible. And so, and so really what it comes down to is execution. So there's a lot of you in here today there's a lot of really brilliant ideas. And some of these ideas are going to win this competition. But you know what? I guarantee there's gonna be several people here that did not win a competition. They're gonna end up being more successful with their, with their business plan and proving us all wrong. Um, it, it really comes down to what's here and, and the determination you have to go out there and do it. So go out there, seize the day, make stuff happen. It, you know, I'm just gonna make, I mean, one thing that's interesting is I, I did join business competitions and marketing competitions when I was in school, hoping I could win an award and, and, you know, and you know, get a nice prize, et cetera. I've never won any of those. But a lot of the people that did have not made it um, as entrepreneurs. They had really good ideas, but they never ever figured out how to, you know, 
seek those ideas and to execute them. So just, just, just what it comes down to, when rubber meets the road, you have to work hard and you have to give it everything that you have. An idea is great. It's a great start, but remember, it's the easiest part. And um, how much more time do I have? Three minutes? <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm not going to, I had a couple of stories I wanted to share, but before, I mean, instead of doing that, is there anyone in here that has a question that, um, that, that, that you just thought about where you need help um, in, in executing your business or with, with anything in business or life? Because I'm going I'm to answer one question. Oh, wow. There's, oh, okay. Good, because it made me look really lame there for a second. I think you know it's good to seek out people that you know that have had experience. So you guys are a part of a fantastic um, 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 organization here. Um, you know the the. the um, this, this is an amazing entrepreneurial program. So you can go to people like Jason or, or, or other teachers and to bounce those ideas off of them. And then after that, it's literally going out there and trying to make stuff happen. If, if you're seeing some success and, and noticing there, there, there is a good chance that you are seeing some momentum, from there, you then give it you know, 100%. But, but really, in order to figure out if it's, it's fluff or not, it's about you know, starting to execute. So you'll, you'll realize quickly, and you know what? A lot of people want to hold on to those ideas even after they start executing and they've raised money. And a lot of the time they should have thrown those out, the, out of the window and they should have you know, stopped, reassessed everything and come up with a new idea or improved that original idea. And that's exactly what happened with us. So from the very beginning, we knew that we wanted to work with online celebrities and influencers. Um, but you know, we want to do a lot of other things as well. And we, we realized, out of the three different services that we had, that two were not going to get us there. And I actually ended up having to buy out my other partners um, for pennies. <laughs> it was really early on, because none of us could stay aligned on what the focus needed to be. And so one partner took one business and, and, and started his own, and the other one you know, decided he wanted to go and get a job. and then. Once we got really focused and, 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 and followed where the momentum was coming, um, it ended up just exploding after that. So um, with that said, if, 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 if hard work is making you nervous, if it's stressing you out, saying, oh, this is going to be too much work, you probably shouldn't step forward. And should probably go and find a really good job with good benefits. And, and you know, maybe learn more before you take that leap. But those that do, you know, move forward, just remember, seek, you know, you know, to, 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 know, the, to know, you know, what you can do better and, and just try to learn as much as you can and give it, a, give it your all and, and you'll have a much higher chance of being successful or finding other areas um, um, and other paths that you can pursue. Um, this, this is a wonderful program that's here. Um, and you are all, you know, such wonderful people. And, um, but what it comes down to, this really isn't the most important thing in life. The most important thing in life, I, I personally believe, is having a family and, and, and getting as close, you know, to Heavenly Father as possible. And, 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 and tr finding peace and then helping those around you find peace. Um, but, and, and, and even if you, know, you do pursue a business career or starting your own business and you see success, it's not what's going to bring you peace. It's going to be great. There's going to be certain things in life that's going to be less stressful to you. Like for example, when, when my wife and I got married, we couldn't afford a wedding dress. She had to borrow her sister's dress. We don't have to deal with that type of stress anymore. Um, however, we continue to have to work to get closer to Heavenly Father and, and to magnify our callings and, and, and to, you know, um, you know, f get, progress and 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 um, you know, and 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 you know, we have to continue to work to find peace and, and and by following the commandments, and and so this is one thing in life that's great, but it's not everything. 
And I just want you all to know I love you, and thank you so much for letting me um, be here today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.